so far we have studied to find out MLEs, the majority cases were univariate probability distributions with real valued parameters. But if we look at the reality, frequently we will be forced to assume multivariate probability distributions having multi-parameter setup. In this module, we will discuss simple techniques to simplify the derivation of MLEs under two popular multi-parameter multivariate probability distributions. In this module, we will discuss the maximum likelihood estimation of multi-parameter cases under some multivariate probability distributions. To this end, we consider two most widely used multivariate probability distributions. One is multivariate normal distribution as a case of continuous probability distribution and another is multinomial distribution as a case of discrete probability distributions. Let x1 curl, x2 curl, xn curl be a random sample of size n drawn from a p-variate normal distribution with mean vector mu curl and dispersion matrix sigma. Obviously, the random sample observations x alpha curls will be a p-component random vector. The likelihood function of theta, which is a collection of mu curl and sigma for given data capital X equal to x1 curl, x2 curl, xn curl is capital L of mu curl sigma equal to 1 by 2 pi to the power np by 2 into determinant of sigma to the power n by 2 into e to the power minus half summation alpha from 1 to n x alpha curl minus mu curl prime sigma inverse x alpha curl minus mu curl. Now, the exponent summation alpha from 1 to n x alpha curl minus mu curl prime sigma inverse x alpha curl minus mu curl can be decomposed as summation alpha from 1 to n x alpha curl minus x bar prime sigma inverse x alpha curl minus x bar curl plus n into x bar curl minus mu curl prime sigma inverse x bar curl minus mu curl by a routine manipulation where x bar curl is nothing but the sample mean vector obtained on the n random sample observations. The second term in right hand side is a positive definite quadratic form as the involved matrix sigma is a PD matrix. Hence, the term will be minimum that is zero if and only if x bar curl minus mu curl equal to null vector that is if and only if mu curl equal to x bar curl. This implies keeping sigma to be fixed for the time being, the likelihood function of mu curl and sigma will be maximized at mu curl hat equal to the sample mean x bar curl. Then putting this choice of mu curl hat in the likelihood function, the likelihood function capital L at mu curl hat and sigma is equal to 1 by root over 2 pi to the power np into determinant of sigma to the power n by 2 e to the power minus half summation alpha from 1 to n x alpha curl minus x bar curl prime sigma inverse into x alpha curl minus x bar curl. So, the log of the likelihood is naturally small l of the function of sigma that is equal to constant plus n by 2 into log of determinant of sigma inverse into another matrix S minus half summation alpha from 1 to n trace of x alpha curl minus x bar curl prime sigma inverse x alpha curl minus x bar curl where the matrix S is the sample variance covariance matrix with divisor n which has the formula 
1 by n summation alpha from 1 to n x alpha curl minus x bar curl into x alpha curl minus x bar curl prime. Now, in the expression of log likelihood as a function of sigma, it is to be noted that in any likelihood function, data capital X is given and hence the matrix S is also becomes known. As a result, any adjustment in the expression of log likelihood which is described solely in terms of the sample variance covariance matrix S is clearly included in the constant part. Another point is also to be noted that trace of a constant is the constant itself and that is why we have introduced trace in the form of log of the likelihood function of sigma. This means log of the likelihood function of sigma equal to constant plus n by 2 log of determinant of sigma inverse into s minus half trace of sigma inverse into summation alpha from 1 to n x alpha curl minus x bar curl into x alpha curl minus x bar curl prime. This is because of the fact that trace of AB equal to trace of BA and trace and summation can be interchanged among themselves. As a result, the log of the likelihood function of sigma is equal to constant plus n by 2 into log of determinant of sigma inverse into S minus half into trace of n into sigma inverse into S by the definition of sample variance covariance matrix S. Now, if we denote sigma inverse into S by another matrix say A, then A is a function of sigma and hence we can say without loss of generality the log of the likelihood function of A equal to constant plus n by 2 into log of determinant of the matrix A minus n by 2 into trace of the matrix A. Now, let lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda p be the p eigenvalues of the matrix A. As both sigma and S are positive definite matrices, so also is A. This implies all the eigenvalues lambda i's are positive. Also, we know determinant of A equal to product of lambda i's and trace of A equal to summation of lambda i's because determinant of any matrix, square matrix, is the product of its eigenvalues and trace of any square matrix is the sum of its eigenvalues. Using all these, we get small l which is equal to the log of the likelihood function of the matrix A can be described as the log of the likelihood function of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda p and this is equal to constant plus n by 2 into summation i from 1 to p log of lambda i minus n by 2 summation i from 1 to p lambda i. Now, the first order derivative of small l with respect to lambda i equal to 0 for all i implies lambda i equal to 1 for all i. Obviously, this equation is nothing but the likelihood equation for all i from 1 to p. Again, the second order derivative of small l with respect to lambda i square at the point lambda i equal to 1 is equal to minus n by 2 which is clearly negative for all i and second order derivative of small l with respect to lambda i and lambda j at the point lambda i and lambda j equal to 1 is 0 for all i and j i not equal to j. Hence, by maxima minima principle, lambda i equal to 1 maximizes the likelihood function because if we want to construct the Hessian matrix here, it will be nothing but a diagonal matrix 
whose all the diagonal elements are minus n by 2 and as a result the hessian matrix will be a negative definite matrix which ensures that lambda equal to 1 maximizes the likelihood function also lambda equal to 1 for all i implies the matrix a is nothing but the identity matrix because it is only the identity matrix whose all the eigenvalues are 1 so this implies sigma inverse s is equal to identity matrix which gives that sigma is equal to the sample variance covariance matrix s that is at sigma equal to s the likelihood is maximized thus combining all these results we can say that for multivariate normal mu sigma distribution the maximum likelihood estimator of mu curl comma sigma is the sample mean vector x bar curl and the sample variance covariance matrix s now we consider an application of the above maximum likelihood estimation suppose we consider a bivariate normal distribution obviously this is a particular case of the above example with p equal to 2 here let x curl equal to x1 and x2 which follows n2 mu curl sigma n2 denotes bivariate normal and here mu curl denotes a vector of two elements mu1 and mu2 and sigma is a 2 cross 2 matrix whose diagonal elements are sigma1 square and sigma2 square and the two common of diagonal elements is rho sigma1 sigma2 where rho denotes the population correlation coefficient between x1 and x2 now based on a random sample of size n on this paired random variable x1 x2 the maximum likelihood estimator of mu curl and sigma will be the sample mean vector x bar curl which is a vector of x1 bar and x2 bar and the sample variance covariance matrix s whose diagonal elements are s1 square s2 square and the common of diagonal element is s12 where s1 square denotes the sample variance on the random variable x1 s2 square is the sample variance of the random variable x2 and s12 is the sample covariance on the random variable x1 and x2 hence the maximum likelihood estimator of the collection of the parameters mu1 mu2 sigma1 square sigma2 square and rho is sample mean x1 bar sample mean x2 bar sample variance s1 square sample variance s2 square and the sample correlation coefficient r which is the sample correlation coefficient of x1 and x2 next we go to the example of multinomial distribution let x1 curl x2 curl xn curl be a random sample of size n drawn from a multinomial distribution with multinomial index m and the parameters p1 p2 pk where all the pk's are greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1 with the restriction that summation of pi is less than or equal to 1 obviously this is a k-variate multinomial distribution usually in multinomial distribution the multinomial index m is assumed to be known so here also we maintain this condition then the likelihood function of the vector p curl whose components are p1 p2 pk is capital l of p curl equal to constant into p1 to the power summation alpha from 1 to n x1 alpha p2 to the power summation alpha from 1 to n x2 alpha etc up to pk to the power summation alpha from 1 to n xk alpha into 1 minus summation i from 1 to k pi whole to the power m into n minus double summation alpha from 1 to n i from 1 to k xi alpha 
obviously here the multinomial model is in non singular form and the component of any vector following multinomial distribution is denoted by x1 x2 and xn this implies the log of the likelihood of p curl is small l p curl equal to constant plus log of p1 times summation alpha from 1 to n x1 alpha plus etc plus log of pk into summation alpha from 1 to n xk alpha plus log of 1 minus summation i from 1 to k pi times mn minus double summation of xi alpha. Now, the first order partial derivative of log likelihood function of p curl with respect to pi is equal to summation alpha from 1 to n xi alpha divided by pi minus mn minus double summation of xi alpha divided by 1 minus summation pi and this holds for all i. Hence, the likelihood equation del del pi of log likelihood of p curl equal to 0 for all i which is denoted by double star automatically implies 1 minus summation i from 1 to k pi equal to mn minus double sum xi alpha divided by mn on simplification by addendo dividendo method. Now, substituting this form in likelihood equations double star, we get pi equal to double summation xi alpha by mn, which is equal to xi dot bar by m equal to pi hat say for all i, where xi dot bar is equal to 1 by n summation alpha from 1 to n xi alpha, which is nothing but sample mean of the ith component variable. Again, on simplification, the second order derivative of log likelihood with respect to pi at the point pi equal to pi hat becomes minus n into m square into within bracket 1 by xi dot bar plus 1 by m minus summation i from 1 to k xi dot bar. Obviously, the whole expression is less than 0 for all i because within bracket both the terms xi dot bar and m minus summation i xi dot bar are non-negative or in particular positive. And similarly, the second order derivative of log likelihood function with respect to pi and pj partially at the point pi equal to pi hat and pj equal to pj hat is equal to minus n into m square divided by m minus summation i from 1 to k xi dot bar and it is also negative for the same reason. As a result, the Hessian matrix is here capital H equal to minus n into m square into a matrix whose diagonal elements are a1 plus b, a2 plus b, ak plus b and all the off diagonal elements are b where ai is nothing but n into m square divided by xi dot bar and that is positive and b equal to n into m square divided by m minus summation i from 1 to k xi dot bar which is also positive. Thus, the H matrix or the Hessian matrix can be described in terms of A1, A2, AK and B. Now, it is our claim that the matrix H is negative definite. We can verify it as by defining another matrix H star which is equal to minus H. Now, H star that is minus H can be expressed as a matrix whose all the diagonal elements are a1, a2, ak and the off diagonal elements are 0 plus another matrix which is the scalar b into the sum vector 1 curl into 1 curl prime. By expressing the matrix h star this way, now we can show that h star is a positive definite matrix. To this end, 
y curl into h star into y curl which is equal to summation i from 1 to n ai into y i square plus b into summation i from 1 to k y i whole square that is greater than equal to 0 for all y i and it attains equality with 0 if and only if y curl equal to null vector. This ensures that the quadratic form y curl prime h star y curl is a PD quadratic form and as a result the associated matrix h star is a PD matrix. Since h star equal to minus h, so this ensures that h is a negative definite matrix. As the Hessian matrix h is a negative definite matrix, hence the unique solution of the likelihood equation which are pi hat for all i from 1 to k automatically maximizes the likelihood function and hence the maximum likelihood estimator of the vector p curl is equal to p1 hat p2 hat dot dot up to pk hat. As an application of the multinomial distribution MLE, let us consider x1 curl, x2 curl, dot dot up to xn curl p a random sample of size n drawn from a multinomial population which follows multinomial distribution with parameter m and p1, p2, p3, p2, p1 such that 2p1 plus 2p2 plus p3 less than equal to 1. Then suppose we are asked to find the maximum likelihood estimators of p1, p2 and p3. Here also we consider the multinomial index m to be known. Also here, any random sample observation vector x alpha curl is a 5 component vector whose components are x1 alpha, x2 alpha, x3 alpha, x4 alpha and x5 alpha. Now, the likelihood function of p1, p2 and p3 is capital L p1, p2, p3 equal to constant into p1 to the power summation alpha from 1 to n x1 alpha plus x5 alpha into p2 to the power summation alpha from 1 to n x2 alpha plus x4 alpha into p3 to the power summation alpha from 1 to n x3 alpha into 1 minus 2p1 minus 2p2 minus p3 whole to the power mn minus double summation xi alpha. Obviously, it is easy to note that it is a 5-nomial distribution with parameter p1, p2, p3, p4, p5 where as a choice p4 is taken as p2 and p5 is taken as p1. Now, the first order derivative of log likelihood function with respect to p1 gives summation alpha x1 alpha plus x5 alpha divided by p1 minus 2 into mn minus double summation xi alpha divided by 1 minus 2p1 minus 2p2 minus p3. Similarly, we will get the partial derivative of log likelihood function with respect to p2 and p3. Hence, the likelihood equation del del pi of log likelihood function equal to 0 for all i from 1, 2 and 3 finally implies 2p1 by 1 minus 2p1 minus 2p2 minus p3 equal to summation x1 alpha plus x5 alpha divided by mn minus double summation xi alpha. Similarly, we get the other two forms from the remaining two likelihood equations. Now denote all these three equations by star. So star implies 1 minus 2p1 minus 2p2 minus p3 equal to mn minus double summation xi alpha by mn. Now, substituting this expression in star, we get p1 equal to summation x1 alpha plus x5 alpha divided by 2mn which is equal to x1 dot bar plus x5 dot bar divided by twice m and is denoted by say p1 hat. Similarly, we get p2 hat and p3 hat. Now, straight away find the Hessian matrix and 
perhaps it is not difficult to show that the hessian matrix is negative definite at the point p1 hat p2 hat and p3 hat so finally this implies p1 hat p2 hat and p3 hat is the maximum likelihood estimator of p1 p2 and p3 before we conclude we must mention that there are many others multi parameter as well as multi variate probability distributions which are also of use in several cases there also we can apply these steps of getting mles unless some special tricks are necessary to solve for mle for them